Hey everyone again. Hi everybody. Hi, 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 hi everyone. I hope, Lord, my people, I love you. In spite of everything, I love you. Um, you know, I, one of the things I have asked God to help me to do because it has been really difficult and I, I deliberately ask him as often as possible, almost daily, and it's to love my enemies. And one of the reasons why I ask him for this particular type of love that he asks of me to do is that I have found in my experiences, um, maybe some persons can can uh, attest to it, maybe some persons can you know, identify, is that I found that in many, many of the my encounters are with persons whom I don't know when i say i do not know i'm talking about knowing them inside out we have never had an, an encounter negative encounter negative running um i don't know where you live we're, we're not friends you know we we don't really talk you know sometimes these are persons who you can work with these are persons that you may see frequently because of the maybe similar places that you may go and they have decided that they're going to take a dislike to you and they tell you that spirit just can't take you what kind of a spirit is that? Because God is love and if it is not love, it's not of God. So from me here that you know that that is not even scriptural. And sometimes, and you know, as women, we know the reason behind it, you know. There's an intuition, a sixth sense that God has given us. We know usually, especially if you're a beautiful looking woman like myself. Yes, yes, I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, people. I'm not one of those people who who will be fearful in in admitting truth whether it's bad or good i'm not i'm not going to be doing that and it doesn't mean that i'm being vain it doesn't mean that i'm being you know like i'm being pompous and showing off myself no why should i call myself ugly when i'm not you know <laughs> i'm a beautiful woman with or without makeup i'm without makeup without ah, my face is improving man i'm working at it you know and trying to eat properly as much as possible sometimes i eat a little bad food yes but you know that i've gone but you know, sometimes people envy you for your even your beauty, how you look. I've I've heard of a true situation here in Jamaica of that, and many persons can can identify and attest to it. Even women that you know are very are beautiful women. They can tell you that they have faced envy and jealousy by other women who may not be as beautiful as they are. They'll envy you for maybe even your skin tone, your shape, your your the way, your your articulate nature, how you speak, your ability to communicate. Your level of brilliance, your level of intelligence, your level of critical thinking skills, you know, your achievements. If you're in a very good job and you're paid well, your job, the, the position that you hold, the car that you drive, the house that you um, own or the home that you own, you know, your children, the spouse, you know, for women, if you're married, maybe because you have a very good husband, you'd be surprised the list of things down to you, the very looks. And I've known in my in my cases, well, I mean, I really have a lot of assets, you know, yet, as yet. So, you know, never forget one lady said, Tony, and, you know, some ladies envy you because of how you are, because of your beauty. You know, you dress well and how you come across very confident. You speak well. You're a bright girl and all of these things. And you're saying, really? Really? <laughs> You're saying, really? Are you got to be kidding me? And in my head, you're thinking, boy, but I think that they have it more than I do. You know, maybe in a financial sense and otherwise. And they're envious. And I can tell you, in my case, people, I found it where per they, they, these are sometimes persons who earn more than I do in, in a higher position than I am. And I'm like, I can't fathom it. I can't fathom it. Sometimes they, they seemingly have more than I would. I'm not, I'm more, I'm celebrating them. Because one of the things that God has, I've asked God to help me to do is not to be envious or jealous of anybody. When the, the pangs or the feelings of jealousy or envy may creep up more on, on, the, on the face of justice versus injustice. You know, that we consider, like you might say, boy, I got to come and work hard and we see people go out there and uh, do nothing or them a gin and them and make it. And you might say, I don't understand God. They might feel a little feeling of jealousy in, this, in that sense, but not jealous of somebody because they see somebody with a big home and you don't know anything. It's hard. Envy them. No, 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 no. 
because we're humans and we'll have you know we have our flaws but when i feel no matter when they come i say god just still help me not to be envious help me not to be jealous help me not to be bad-minded help me not to create strife because the bible says where there's strife all kinds of evil presents itself but i've asked god to help me to love mine enemies especially in the cases that i said where many of them most of them are without cause i've not done them any wrong you, you just know that you've not done them any wrong and they've decided to take you on as an enemy and try to make your life a living hell and try to get others to be on board with them and it's like a chain reaction is that they can always find people they always think they can find people and you wonder to yourself my god what is really going on jesus oh my god he he understood that he understood that how the pharisees hated him they were the Bible because they were jealous of him it said it if you read some of the 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 um the versions you know i'm um, sorry people you will see some of the versions of it you know and um it tells you that because they, because they realized that this man was just beyond brilliant. He was beyond intelligent. Jesus was just... Sometimes he said, Jesus, you know, all, your, all him facetious nature when him just put them in that place. It, it just marvels you. The level of intellect, the level of intelligence, the level of brilliance, the level of critical thinking skills, the level of knowing when to be silent, the knowing when to be strong when him throw the money chase and beat them out of the place. He was a balanced human being and fully God, fully human. You know? And yet he loved them nonetheless, even though he knew that they were hypocrites. He was, and he was very truthful. He said, you come and you're smiling and skinning off your teeth like you think I don't know your hearts. Your hearts are like sepulchers, like graves. But I'm not going to treat you the way you treat me. Your day of judgment is coming, do you? Now, don't get me wrong. Your day of judgment is coming if you don't repent. I feel like people who, like Nicodemus, who probably was a Pharisee as well, you know, you know, may have changed and repented after, I, when he asked the question about being born again. Can a man be born of a, a woman again after he has been born? And Jesus said, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about transformation by the Holy Spirit. And me loving my enemies has to be on the basis of being transformed by the Holy Spirit. That's the only way I can do it. I can't do it in and of myself and hate them just the, the very same way or even more. Because I've not done them wrong and they've tried to create mayhem in my life. But God says I have to love them, do good to them. And I ask him every day to help me. Or as much as I can. May not be every single solitary day pray to say. You know what I'm saying when I say every day. I'm talking generally a consistent prayer. But it can be done. And God can give you that compassion and that love for them. It can be done. I've seen it in my own life. Sometimes I'll, I'll just you know get a little annoyed when i say that they're trying and to rear their ugly heads when i say ugly heads i'm talking about the things that they do I'm not talking physical look and you know usually when your inside is ugly it comes out on the outside when your inside is ugly it comes out on the answer outside even if you may have the so-called european what they call beauty that's what they call beautiful looking people you know, it will come out on the outside. It's, it's somehow, it somehow disfigures you. When you're very nice, even if you don't have the beautiful beauty queen look. It's when you're nice, it's something about you radiates. Even if a person doesn't have that beauty queen look. You know what I'm saying? It radiates. And somehow it's almost like it transforms the face and makes them look better and better. When you're ugly on the inside, it usually comes out on the outside. Somewhere or other, you know, and it damages your body physically damages your body physically sometimes it damages your skin it damages so many things about you and you especially when you deliberately treat others badly you're envious of others jealous of others who have not done you wrong you spread propaganda you slander them so you may know truth slander really is truth used with evil intent as a man preaches says so you might know somebody who have hiv aids and you tell everybody because you know that they're going to treat them badly and scorn them and ostracize them and reject them and spread it and damage their lives try to at least but you have to love your enemies you have to love them you have to do good to them and part and parcel of that is also you may know things about them you don't have to spread it to everybody you may know things that can damage their character damage their reputation you don't have to spread it that's one of the ways of loving your enemies 
You don't have to. Some of them, they think I don't know that they don't like me. It shows. It's like God reveals them to me. I always ask, ask God for the gift of discernment. But I don't have to make you know. You know, I'm going to be respectful to you. Treat you good, genuinely. And all of that. Because I don't believe that I have to, you know, repay evil for evil. I don't have to do that. I don't have to be rude to you. I don't have to treat you bad. I don't have to spread any lies and spread any propaganda on you and go on the most. We've been not going to tell you lies. Sometimes it's irritating when you hear of what they do and so forth. Sometimes my flesh will come up and say, boy, I'm telling them people are not easy. You know, they're wicked, you know. You know, God. But you know what, God? Bless them. Bless them. Keep them. May your face shine upon them and be gracious unto them. And may you grant them peace. I've even seen cases where somebody take you on as an enemy. And they may have, have a, they may have a genuine enemy, you know. And then they recon, reconcile with the genuine enemy and they still treat you bad. <laughs> and laugh with the genuine enemy who really destroyed their lives. I can never understand that. I'd love for somebody to explain that phenomenon. Or, or is it phenomenon? Rather, to me. So they take you on as an enemy, you know. You're not an enemy of them. Now. They take you on as an enemy. Maybe jealousy of some reason or other. They may have a genuine enemy. Somebody who damaged their lives damage their character their reputation repeatedly has the person has not changed but somehow they decide to become an ally against you i've never I, i've never seen that and then and them and the individual talk maybe they, 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 behind each other backs they still crucify each other you know but they, that individual doesn't really talk to you and they talk to that individual i have never seen an, a strange phenomenon as that but it happens i i don't know but I have to love my enemies. I have to love them. The fact of the matter is, I too am not perfect. I might not do that to people, treat them bad deliberately. I might not slander people, be envious and jealous of people and create strife and mayhem. But I have ways that I want God to extend mercy and compassion and love and all of these wonderful, nice qualities towards me. I have to forgive them. I never forgot a man shamed and disgraced me to the core, even threatened me physically. And I was angry for a while. I was very, very angry because he did it among other men who never supported me, never helped me. Maybe they were afraid of some loss or whatever. And I had to ask God, help me to forgive and love. I never thought I would be at the place where I can forgive the individual. Because the person would have threatened me physically, so to speak, as well. So you can't say your words in about when you reach this or no. And as a man, but I've had to forgive. I've had to. The person has not apologized. But, you know, sometimes you won't get the apology. It's life. You have to move on. You have to just still move on and do good as much as you can do good. You know? And love people of your enemies. You have to love them people. And loving them is part of not shaming them, not embarrassing them. If you see them, they're in need, you help. You help them. Genuinely. You heap coats of fire on their heads. But you have to love your enemies, people. Please. And it gives you peace of mind. It gives you peace of mind. And remember that you two are flawed. Even though you may not, you know, as I said, deliberately set out to hurt people. But you two, you two, you are a flawed individual and you need help. And you need somebody to um, just help you to become the better individual. And that's Jesus Christ himself. And he can help you. Just pray every day. You just have to pray every day. Even if you fall down, you look like you. I said, boy, God, me, I pray like it getting worse and worse. Because that's how it feels sometimes with me. And I said, God, I'm praying. And I wonder if it's bad things I'm praying to ask for. I'm asking for as opposed to good things. You know? But there's an enemy who works. And he's going to come at you, come at you, come at you. And try and make the situation even worse. We we'll have to just trust God. And believe in him. In him and, be, and, and work with the process. And work with the process. Rome wasn't built in a day. So I'm not going to be the best individual today. I'm not going to be. Maybe not even tomorrow. But in time I will. And if I've done it wrong, I'm sorry. If I've done it wrong, I genuinely am sorry. I really am. I'm becoming a better person every day. Just be patient with me, please. Just as how God is patient with you. Alright? So my beautiful people, my wonderful people, have a blessed day. And love your enemies. Forgive people. Forgive. Just forgive. Ask God to help you. Don't wait on a flurry feeling. That will come in time. In time. Time heals, you know, when you're willing for it to heal. All right? Have a good one. Take care. Love you, know. Mwah.